Good morning everybody, how are you today? I hope you are enjoying this lovely sunshine that we're having at the moment. It's just beautiful weather at the moment. So it's a great opportunity for us to be going on those walks outside that we're encouraged to do and keep fit and healthy. But I'm just wondering about how much you've noticed about your hands recently. Because we've been encouraged, haven't we, to be washing our hands a lot more and we're using our hands to remember things that we can pray for and things that we can thank God for. So that's what we're doing at the moment. So we've been using our thumbs to remind us of those closest to us, because our thumb gets right close to us, doesn't it? Closest to us, and we thank God for our friends and our families and prayed for those. We use this one to think about people that point us in the right direction. And this is our people that we go to for help. Yesterday, we looked at this one, wasn't it? It's the tallest one. And this is the one that we use to remember those that are in charge and making those decisions that affect our lives and praying for them to have wisdom. So we're on to this one today. And this one actually is an interesting finger because sometimes people call this the weakest finger. But it's not actually any weaker than any of the others. But it is the most dependent finger because in here, in this bit of our hand here, it's where all the ligaments and the tendons all attach. And it's the one that's most attached to all the others. So this one is our most dependent finger and needs help from this one and this one in order to be able to move more because it's connected in this part of our hand. So I thought we could think about people that we help and what we can do to be helping people at the moment and pray and ask God to help us. But that reminded me of somebody in the Bible. Now, there was a guy in the Bible called Moses. Now, you've probably heard of Moses, but Moses was the leader of the Israelites, God's people, back in the Old Testament, back in the book of Exodus. And Moses had was leading the people out of slavery through from Egypt through the wilderness to the promised land of Israel and it was quite a long way and it took a long time uh, it took 40 years of wandering round and round in circles and um, one of the things that happened on this journey was a battle now most people were dependent on Moses for helping them to hear from God and for leading them well and being a great leader. But there was this one occasion when Moses was actually really dependent on other people. And it's the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verse verses 8 to 16. But I'm only going to read you verse 12, because that tells you who he was dependent on and how they helped him. And in verse 12, it says, Later, when Moses' arms became tired the men put a large rock under him and he sat on it then Aaron and her held up Moses's hands Aaron on one side her on the other and they kept his hands steady until the sun went down so they were having a battle and as long as Moses held up his staff and held up his arms the Israelite people were winning and as soon as Moses' arms got tired and he dropped them, the Amalekites, that's who they were battling, they then started winning. So God, so God was strengthening them as long as Moses had his arms up. He couldn't do it on his own. He couldn't do it. So he had Aaron and her on either side holding his hands up so that together they could have the victory that God was going to give them. But sometimes I think we like to do things on our own, don't we? We try and do things on our own, but we can't because we all live with other people. But there's another verse in the Bible, in the New Testament, which was is John chapter 3, verse 18. And it's actually one that I know of at least one school that has as their school vision statement and it's this my children 
you should love people not only with words and talk, but by our actions and true caring. Now, at the moment, we are maybe keeping ourselves to ourselves at the moment, staying at home and staying safe. But there are other actions that we can be doing in order to help people who are a bit more vulnerable than we are. So on our hand outline, we've got this. I've written it on already. But it says, people that we can help. Because the other day we had people who help us, but people that we can help. Who is it that we can help? Now, I've already heard of some stories of things that are happening. I've heard of a year six in one school who has sent a thinking of you card to somebody who is self-isolating at the moment and just sent her a card just to say I'm hi thinking of you hope you're well looking forward to seeing you soon um I've heard of an infant school locally who has encouraged all of their their pupils to to draw rainbows rainbow is a sign of God's promise isn't it and They've drawn rainbows and encouraging them to put them in their windows so that people on their walk can go on a rainbow treasure hunt. I love that. I've spotted five so far. Um, so you could do that. And all of these things are things that we can do to encourage people who are maybe feeling a little vulnerable, a little bit isolated. You could maybe ring your grandparents that you're not seeing at the moment and give them a little ring and go, how are you? You could try seeing if you could play a game with a friend online. There's all sorts of things that you can do to feel connected. But I'm wondering if you can think of three people that you can do a different challenge to. It could even be painting a picture or drawing a picture and sending it in the post to a local care home or nursing home for the elderly because a lot of them are not getting visits from their family and it's just that reaching out to one another because it says doesn't it in 1 John 3 7 verse 18 1 John 3 18 my children we should love people not only with words and talk although that's good but by actions and true caring so what Three people, which three people, who do you think might be feeling a bit lonely and vulnerable at the moment, can you help? And how can you do that? And let me know how you're getting on. And I'm going to say a prayer. And if you can read my prayer at the end, you can say amen, which just means I agree. Heavenly Father, thank you for our families and the people in our homes. But help us to remember those that don't have people with them at the moment, that are maybe lonely and vulnerable. And keeping themselves separate to help protect them from being poorly. Please help us to not just look out for ourselves, but to look out for other people. And help us all to think of an action we can do to show your love to them. Amen. See you tomorrow.